just did a reset of all my uh, settings because I was having a problem and we're gonna go through setting everything back up so this is uh, just like from scratch from here we've gone menu and then at the bottom preferences and your first screen is info it tells you your firmware serial number and the control surface and if you click update with Wi-Fi and hit online update you can get your force updated and you can go to update mode or USB mode to do it two other ways uh, the Wi-Fi one is incredibly easy does it all internally and uh, I recommend that go to the next screen Wi-Fi here and just program in your Wi-Fi network you can turn it off if you're done with it. It also connects via Wi-Fi for Ableton Live or various other programs that have MIDI transmitted through the Wi-Fi. So uh, it's really nice to have it on and then you can do Ableton Link. Ethernet, you can set a lot of stuff here for uh, timing and connect by Cat5 cable. It's a cabled standard so you can hook up a MIDI controller or various other things. Um, Bluetooth does some really rad stuff and there's some new gear coming out with that that enables some good things you can do a little keyboard and um, I've not gotten my keyboard to work with that so far I'll try an Apple one today um, audio device this is where you select if there's a class compliant mixer and you need to tap on that maybe reboot if you don't see it in there it's kind of finicky sometimes and you select your other device and then select 32 ins and outs to expand it out beyond what you see in the eight um, or just having two as kind of like a one and two out and i recommend hitting that and exploring uh, how far your mixer will go um, for audio export here we're going to get into some settings so enable disk streaming is now enabled by default uh, that allows you to play out and I'll also stream audio for recording. For my bit depth, I'm going 24 bit, and my bounce depth is 24 bit that allows extra headroom. There's a lot on the internet you can read about 24 and 48. I've got another video specifically about that. So I recommend the 24 bit audio warp algorithms. If you double tap it, you can see there's a basic less CPU one. If you start running out of CPU, you can bounce that to audio and then. Um, Remove that plugin or delete that track if you wanted, or dial down your uh, processing there if you're doing live production. For recording tracks, it's especially good to have Pro 10. Audio track warps, auto warp is on. So if that's uh, bothering you on import, come in here to audio and turn that to off and then re-import things and see if that helps um, with how you wanted to work with the audio you're doing. BPM detection's on, and I've given it a range that's close to drum and bass. Um, hip hop to drum and bass. Maybe 88 to 175 is more of what I'm doing. Let's set that. Okay, so. MIDI sync is the important one and right now I've got nothing really going on so force can be the global if you wanted to control all the MIDI stuff that's being uh, worked with here and I'm not seeing my other keyboard here my um, what was that Samson graphite 25 so I'll have to play with that later um, but I've got a whole uh, video on this screen here for setting MIDI and right now we don't need any global and just do track on all of them hardware this is the fun one pad brightness you can dim it down for the pads mm. so daytime or nighttime club setting and then this is a really important one empty slots oh geez I'm trying to reduce uh, glare so how if that's bothered you we'll see how this turns out blanket noise um, empty slots dim or off you can turn your knob for these and I prefer off because you can see more clearly what's going on 
at a glance. And then track buttons, disabled in notes and step sequencer. What it really means is you have to hold the one through eight at the bottom if you wanna change tracks instead of just hitting it and it changes tracks. So select track immediately is what that means and disabled is what everyone should probably be running with so you don't bump it when you're hitting notes. And then leave your slopes as they are unless you like something different. The pad curves are described in the manual. You can type that in and find it. I think I'm bumping this. Um, so velocity of the pads and the aftertouch setting right there. I'm wondering if I need to increase my aftertouch. It's lovely. Some of these things are hard to select. Um, screen dimming at five. So there's your screen brightness, that's nice. Um, pitch bend, tempo taps, date and time. So I think that's all the good still. Sequencer. And I don't think I really changed. So truncate to clip length. You can cut automatically, I think. And I may have changed that. Clip end as played. So if you set a clip length, it'll automatically stop and cut at that length. Or you can decide what you want to do with it by trimming your clip length later. So I'm going to come back at the sequencer and look at this one later. Um, I may have set that as uh, as played. Um, I think all the things, some control plays, nothing really there. Project defaults, so here's your BPM that you like the most. This is terrible recording. Default tempo. Um, And then your audio and MIDI monitors can be set down below as default, so you don't have to change them if you want it to be merge. And loads and saves. I've disabled autosave after enabling it because it's done some glitchy stuff while I've been working in the middle of a project. All right, that's all of it. Let's get back to projects.